Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we're looking, or well, we're not looking, as, well, we are looking I suppose, it's a video isn't it? Uh, anyway, I'm going all over the place already. This guy which we haven't seen for weeks and weeks. Uh, this is the 28mm uh, from Foundry. <laughs> yeah, I believe it's Foundry. Uh, it's a 1689 Williamite artilleryman so it's from uh, King William of Orange's uh, wars in the against mainly King Louis uh, and overthrowing uh, King James and uh, that type of era 1680s to uh, very early 1700s and obviously you can going to Queen Anne and, and Queen Mary well Queen Mary and Queen Anne uh, confused the hell out of you already haven't I yeah all I'm going to do with this one is I've painted the I've sanded the base I put the rocks on the base uh, I'm just going to quickly show a dry brush on camera, uh, no varnish on it, uh, then we're going to stick a few tufts on I just wanted to show a few bits for basing uh, for those guys that are just coming into it and really not really having much of an idea, um, you know, I don't think there's anything really for the old sweats to, to really take on board but uh, I just thought for anybody that you know has been watching that particular figure get painted you know you might you know you might well be new to historical miniatures um and to be honest with you you could use it on fantasy or that type of basing i mean basing's basing at the end of the day it's just how the colors you choose and the things you put on your base which is all personal to you uh, so we'll go down to the bench and we'll take a look at uh, some some of the uh, products well they're not even products because most of what we put on our bases are um, scratch stuff that we've just found in your garden uh, spares in your spares box whatever you, whatever you've got you know it really is a personal thing you can throw a lot of bases uh, you know some of the fantasy bases you see you know they're towering high you know with, with you know different rock outcrops or or cityscape type material uh, for historical miniatures when you're doing a say a particularly large well not even large but you know you're doing a, a, an army uh, you might not want to go to that extent because one, you haven't got the physical space on the bases to put them on, um, and uh, and it just might be a case you can't, you know, you just don't want to go to that extent, you know, just keep it basic and, and that's that's enough for you. Uh, again, most of what we are dealing with here when historical miniatures. If you're gaming them, tend to be on MDF bases. Yes, you, some of the like peri type plastic bases. Uh, some people mount them on card, uh, but if I'm basing anything, 90% of the time for 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 gaming. So that's the uh, at the moment the 18 millimeter Napoleonic AB commissioned the uh, Chasseurs and Grenadiers of the Guard that I'm doing uh, for a client. Uh, he has he's getting me to base all these and they go on MDF bases and uh, a minimum type of of, of uh, basing materials on top of that uh, not because he's he doesn't particularly mind as long as it's kept from the I did a, a larger commission for him earlier on and and they've all got to really tie into that theme uh, to a degree uh, but because the bases for this particular rule set and, and the size that he wants uh, they are limited to what you can get on them so you can have that uh, i like these i believe these are 30 mil bases for individual figures you see my vietnam figures on those uh, it's basically because i can throw more stuff on the on the ground uh, this guy isn't he's really being based just to sh finish him off really well, i said i'd go from beginning to end with it and to give a few techniques out to those that, that you know didn't really know a great deal um, so yeah you know basing uh, you can you can obviously just collect stuff out your garden be it gravel rocks uh, natural materials in other words uh, you can get away with that uh, you can buy the tufts pre-made uh, I'll show you some tufts in a minute they won't I might have still some old tufts uh, from years ago uh, that uh, I haven't used uh, so I'll just show you the pre-made tufts uh, I make my own with a, a flock box. I'll quickly, I'll get that out of the cupboard in a minute and quickly put that on under the camera. Uh, I'm not recommending it, and that's not <laughs> because I don't recommend it. I just mean uh, I think it's called the flock box. I don't know if they still make them. 
but that's what I use uh, and, it, and it served me well for all these years so I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is I want to say I don't recommend it I just mean um, you know you can get the ones that you shake and, and all that type of stuff so the, what I'm trying to say is there are loads of ones out there I just have, to have, have this one uh, but yeah you can get materials out your garden then you can buy the tufts I decided to go down the route of uh, using my own static grass on my my figures again look at my 18 mil napoleonics uh, that I'm putting up at the moment you'll see the you'll see this the, the static grass as a, as a grass rather than just tufts I've gone more over of late in the last probably in the last couple of years to making just thousands of tufts and sticking thousands of tufts on now if you were to do that buying boxes of tufts is going to cost you a lot of money uh, once you've invested in something like the, the status grass applicators which aren't cheap you know again I'm, I'm I'm hazy on how much it costs now but you you know you could be looking at anything from 40 to 70 60 pounds you know it, they're, they're not particularly cheap uh, but as long as they last you I mean I'll they probably pay for themselves you know and, and they just give you that choice of what you want to do with them as well but yeah get yourself some tufts or make your own you can just sprinkle it over you know it, it it does in my opinion look as good because it tends to flatten out a lot of the time but you you know you, you can get away with just sprinkling the grass on top you don't need any static charge put through it to make it stand up that's why you do it for by the way make the the, st the, st the static particles stand up uh, I make my I'm not I should be telling all this with it but I haven't got it actually on 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 this on this thing you I'm, you'll see on my bases I always paint my rocks you know whether they're tiny little natural gravelly bits um, to uh, or to my uh, fake cork rocks but if we're talking the natural ones I know a lot of people are quite happy to put the natural stones down in amongst their figures this is purely my own reasoning why I don't uh, it's not having a pop at anybody as I say this is all subjective it's all for what is it, uh, the right word <laughs> but it's all for you to decide how you want to play it you know it's your it's your figures your models whatever you're going to do in life do what you want to do not what somebody's uh, going to lead you through the nose uh, to do but I paint my rocks only purely because for me this figure looks like a uh, a wargaming figure a uh, well not even that you know I, I, I do them for collectors uh, I, I don't I don't mean it disparagingly what I mean is he's still a toy soldier to me so putting this painted piece of metal or plastic or resin putting him on a base uh, I actually prefer to see the because he's a fake figure <laughs> for a better word so to put a bunch of natural stones around him it clashes in my head that's all it is it's just my viewpoint so I prefer to paint the rocks which is my wife <laughs> you're painting rocks to look like rocks <laughs> yes <laughs> you've got to be in here to understand it <laughs> but it's just that's how I work it it's just for me it's it's not a you know it's not a lifelike figure it's not like standing me in my garden you know, if you painted the rocks around me, stood in my garden, I'd look like a, a natural person stood around painted rocks. So, <laughs> uh, not that we've got much garden with Pop. Uh, well, he's had two Pops, but we, you often hear me say Pops because I never, my little fella is behind me by that bunch of flowers. Uh, I, can't, I can't say one without the other. Anyway, I'm digressing. But yeah, uh, I paint my rocks. There we go. So, as usual, I'm telling you a lot of stuff without showing you anything. It's the way we roll here. Guys, join me at the bench. Uh, we'll go through... Uh, I'm just going to quickly apply some some uh, some silver grey paint on, which is what I used as a final highlight, or probably usually only a single highlight, actually, straight over the top of my brown paint, painted uh, sand. Again, I'm telling you all this without showing you. Let's go down to the bench. Right guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, I'm sorry about the lighting outside, obviously in the UK is we've gone to our normal very dark grey skies. Where are we Gav? Come on. Here we go. Right, we've got our 
our fellow here. Right, now, to produce what you can see on the base there, first of all, you'll need the following. Uh, PVA glue, uh, which you will wipe over the, the, obviously the figure's already stuck down on the base. Uh, so I use super glue uh, usually to, to stick the fella down. Sometimes I'll use, I've got two types of PVA glue that I use. Uh, I use a very thick uh, PVA. I'll, I might as well show you one minute. Right, I'm showing you the PVA because I'll often sh say I use PVA and then somebody will ask me what type of PVA do you use, so it's just easier. So, uh, wood adhesive, uh, I got this off eBay uh, during the lockdown of last year, um, so you could probably just get these anywhere uh, you like. Uh, fast cure, 10 minutes. You can just as easily stick this figure down with this rather than super glue, and I do from time to time, it just depends what I've got at hand at that time right so I believe I stuck this guy down with uh, super glue this time but it could have just been easy this stuff uh, it makes no difference not by the time you've put the sand and stuff on so put this stuff down first uh, it's quite thick uh, I don't water it down I put it on neat I put it on with I'm so well prepared aren't I now this is as you can see is starting to fray a fair bit now let's just see if we can point her up a bit Try and use something long like that if you can. Uh, this is again just my way of doing it. Uh, use something like that because you'll be able to uh, get it in all the nooks and crannies, right? Now, the light in here is absolutely appalling. I've got three lights, or four lights on actually. Uh, yeah, you can get it all importantly around in tight areas where you're not gonna get PVA uh, over the figure. If I do get PVA over the figure, uh, I either use a piece of damp towel uh, or another uh, damp paintbrush uh, that I can wash off later and, and try and get it off that way. Hopefully it'll dry. Uh, it might have a, a slight glaze to it and if you do, you can, you can uh, um, when you put your final coat of varnish on the figure, uh, that'll, that'll disappear. Uh, but what you don't really want is a load of sand stuck up the legs. Uh, you can, if you, if you, once you've done that, flick it off straight away, uh, you will remove that, but obviously once it's on, it's on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I put my, my glue on first, then I use this. Uh, by the way, this, these are the range here in the UK is your best friend uh, for these type of products, but obviously any cheap place, uh, and you can pick these up in there. There are cheap, arty paintbrushes, you know, literally a bag of a dozen different shapes. Uh, so I apply it with that and then just wash that under a warm warm water tap and it'll get the PVA off again in red. I've had been using this now, it's starting to slowly just start degrade now, but I've been using this for probably a couple of years. Uh, sand, I don't go using any of the orange building sand. Uh, people do use like dirt out the gardens um, and I do, I am starting to mix a bit up for my scale modeling in with sand, but that's a different story. So this is, silver sand, uh, ignore the, the chunkier bits in there, that's bits that have just fallen in as I've been basing. So, but that's what your, get sand on in my camera, so let's hang on a second. That's what you're looking at. It's, it's uh, play pit sand. Uh, you can get it from, from most, uh, I used to say the early learning center in the UK, which is where I bought five, was it five a kilo or whatever I bought it from from years ago and I'm still using but I've that shut down now but I'm just doing that so you can see ignore the chunkier bits I say they're all bits that over time has, has fallen in I dry it out uh, actually when the wife's although I do all the cooking so what am I what am I saying this quietly for but while the wife's out uh, I put it <laughs> put it I put some silver foil on a on a baking sheet a uh, baking tray and stick it in the oven and dry it out make sure it's dried out first uh, I'll fill it up with these and that's probably about three years uh, you can't even see can you that's probably about three years in gone down in that uh, margarine tub and I've still got you know probably about another year before or six months before I have to refill it so yeah silver sand and that is what has gone over our fella's base now there's different ways you can approach the basing that's the simplest way PVA silver sand uh, you can mix it up with some of this stuff uh, 
and that is stuff that you can get from again that I got I believe I got this from the range for the you know where they put in aviaries and stuff for budgies to chomp on. Uh, you can mix that up with the silver sand, uh, which I do. Uh, I'm not saying that I have a lot of curries, but uh, the old curry containers for the sauces and stuff, I mix, I pre-mix them up in that if I want to do that type of style, and just scoop it out and you know hold your figure over, scoop it over. Uh, jobs are good. Uh, if you want to mix it up a bit more. I thought I'd pulled this out and I haven't. Oh, well done, Gav. Anyway, there's there's what they call ballast mix from a company, uh, from well, from railway companies anyway, you know, that do uh, the different OO gauge and N gauge and all that stuff. Uh, look for their railway ballast. I do have a bag in there. Uh, I don't, I do mix it up with these for the War Games bases occasionally. Uh, a lot of the time, in fact, that might even have some in that mix, I'm not sure, but. Um, I use that mainly again for doing different textures on the larger, the one in 35s for the for the modelling and my uh, my larger figures for display. But uh, I do use it occasionally. But yeah, that stuff, a bag of that is peanuts. You know, I don't suggest using peanuts on this. By the way, it, it, it don't go down well. So yeah, uh, what you can also use though, uh, if you want to hide that base, you notice that the base isn't particularly well hidden there. That is because. I don't need to hide it because I'm going to be sticking tufts all around it, uh, which is a quick way of doing it and also um, a legitimate way of doing it, is what I, I was supposed to say. Uh, you can use milliput or any, you can get use das clay, anything that you want, and do a thin. Uh, I normally, I was doing this the other day and I can't remember what figure I was, I was doing it on, something that I've shown you guys already, uh, but I will roll it out. Uh, with me, you know, just using my fingers uh, uh, into a, and a, and a paintbrush uh, as a rolling pin, and uh, don't use one of these hexagonal ones. It doesn't. It looks like Fred Flintstone when you're doing it. But yeah, use a you know use a round one and uh, flatten it out, and then I, I I peel off little squares and I stick it round. But I only do it up to the height of the height of the actual uh, base itself. Uh, and then then I do the PVA once it's dried I leave it overnight and do the PVA on top and the sand that I've done here but it'll just hide you that base a bit more uh, you know it won't be as, as sitting so proud because some brown, uh, some bases are quite proud and I would suggest that you take the bottom of the base down with a, th a, a big engineering file uh, that I showed on the other videos uh, if you fancy that but uh, yeah anything I, I've just used mini pop uh, I often use mini puck because it's there it's probably not cheap as just using some dust clay or something but I know it's an epoxy two-part clay and it's going to go off and stick hard and, and all the rest of it so once you've actually done your your, your you've stuck your sand down uh, often with this 10 minute drying time obviously I, I'd probably leave it about an hour or so and then what I do is uh, you can either use the same the same uh, a PVA but watered down to a consistency of uh, no we're not going to say milk <laughs> that's the standard one uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think what we can what we can say let's say honey <laughs> a nice runny honey <laughs> I do it I do it like that enough that it will it will you know you can wipe it around the the base uh, the reason I do that is one it keeps the sand extra rock hard uh, it will also keep your figure solidly to that base. I mean, it's it's you know it's been stuck down, then it's had PVA sand put over it, and then it's had PVA put over again. So I'll put that over, uh, but it also has the the thing of of not soaking up when you come to put your base color on. Uh, you tend to find if you put it directly onto sand, it will soak. In, obviously, the sand will soak it up uh, like it would do out in in natural environment. Uh, so a, a good wash over with PVA uh, really helps and again leave that it might take obviously it's been watered down so it'll take longer to go if you don't want to water it down you can use which I've got over here it's a bit dusty because I only use it occasionally these days uh, decorate is PVA in fact actually why didn't I just do that in the first place <laughs> see that see that hang on there we go that type of that type of consistency. I thought the honey, the honey idea was a lot, uh, a lot better.
but decorated PVA is already watered down if you don't if you really you know either can't be bothered or you know I mean PVA ain't gonna hurt you it's not gonna hurt your figure so just instead of buying loads unless you need them for other applications just water PVA down in a again you see me milk, milk bottle tops everywhere I save everyone and they get used as little dishes uh, so PVA has gone over the top now I use uh, the cheapest option would be to use craft paint on top of the the figure the, on top of the base uh, that would be too easy and too cheap for Gav so Gav uses just his normal his normal stuff and that's my base colour of choice burnt umber uh, I put that over and as I say because it's gone over PVA it's not soaking in that's just had one coat you can see it's fairly uh, the light today is ridiculous uh, it, it could really do with a second one I'm not going to do it uh, because I'm just going to put some silver over the top well silver grey over the top of that in a minute now as I said to you guys that shale that I showed you uh, I will paint that different colours uh, you know I will highlight them uh, that's where I've used it on and used the uh, used the epoxy clay uh, it was on the Wild West figures I did and you notice I highlighted the different uh, lumpy bits in it. That was obviously all those little shaly bits. You can get, I have got boxes of other gravel that I've I've bought for, or often you just find them, you know, uh, and you think, oh yeah, I love, I love some of that. Uh, my wife was having some stuff done at her work and the, the builders left behind split bags of this, that and the other. So <laughs> she was going up with margarine tubs and filling them up. So I've got a whole host of this tiny pea gravel, as I call it. Uh, you can use obviously um, obviously slate and that's also good uh, but um, yeah I, I paint my stuff now the rocks that you see they are uh, this stuff this is what I use uh, whether I, they'll still have it I don't know uh, but laminate was all the rage uh, for the last 15 20 years in our country for flooring and this is what they use for expansion joints uh, on the skirting board or on the side of the walls. Uh, and I went in a laminate shop the other day because the wife's on about changing stuff yet again. Yeah, yet again, they've been down for 20 years, so I suppose she's got a point. Anyway, uh, I didn't see any of this stuff. Uh, so whether they've changed it, I have no idea. Uh, but cork's cork, wherever you get it from. I've also used, uh, you can get cork uh, heat uh, for, for um, putting you know cups down mats is what I was after you can bust that up just as easy uh, and it will give you give you this texture of rock uh, you can use this stuff blue foam now I buy this in bulk about 40 pound for a load of sheets but I'm also using it for my uh, scale mod well I use it mainly all from the scale modeling it's not very often I use it for these guys but I thought if you had this around as you can see uh, it works just when you break it up and put your scalpel in there and that it will make a rock uh, just a slightly different texture than that uh, I paint the rocks black by the way usually uh, just to get in all the nooks and crannies you, you often miss, miss some because it's cork and it's hard to get into everything I really do apologise for the lights guys I'm, I can't see any other better way of doing that really um, but anyway uh, I paint, it, paint the rocks, uh, standard rocks as I would call them, black. Uh, this hasn't had the final highlight of silver grey that's going to go all over the, uh, the, gravel, uh, the sand as well. Uh, that's just had uh, something like London grey and, and mid grey put over the top. Obviously, whatever environment you're in, obviously it depends what colour you want to paint your rocks, but that's my standard type of paint scheme for them. Uh, right, so let's just have a quick look at what we're going to be doing for the uh, for the dry brushing uh, this is a bought dry brush well, it's a war game a small dry brush uh, this one hasn't seen much action although looking at the end you think it had um, I'm not really that fussed with and this isn't having a go at this company I, I'm, I'm bought dry brushes with you know like this I suppose yeah you know they it'll cover this area okay you wouldn't want to use a large one but quite often I find them they curl up quite easy anyway uh, and uh, they tend to they can tend to get over in the wrong places uh, and, and get and you end up dry brushing your figure or places that you don't want to 
um, so I don't really use them a great deal. Uh, these guys, this is a large one, obviously you wouldn't use it for this figure, but I, I use them, I've been using it dry brushing on um, model related stuff. Uh, again, just cheap brushes from, from the range. Uh, I find these completely, fairly, you know, just decent brushes, but obviously that size is way too big for what we need. Now, what I normally do is when I, these were those Lows, now I am criticizing <laughs> the, uh, the army painter brushes that I bought last time. I'd say it because I, I criticized them last time. They just couldn't hold a point for some reason. And they've all been relegated to literally rough brushing. So anything with a base. So I did this one, I use this one on the, on the sides. Um, I actually prefer using this type. This one's slightly bigger, so I'll probably use this one, which as you can see has had a way load of use and not from me painting figures because it was useless as a brush, as a couldn't hold a point to save his life. Uh, so it's just been from new, uh, so it's just being used as a dry brush. So uh, I've already pre put some, some silver paint down. We've got our bit of well used kitchen towel. Uh, I put a bit of water in the paint as you would do but just leaving it thick you could just lose it if you're dry brushing you could use it raw but the problem is you're using a lot of paint up then so we, if we've got this on our, our brush this is dry brushing we're taking it off our brush uh, it's hit and miss uh, so let's have a can we see not convinced with these lights today it can leave you a line I'm praying it's not going to Now this is, I tend not to put a second highlight, you know, base and a first highlight on doing these type of bases. Yes, the cowboy bases you saw me do, I I did that um, because I was putting lots of different colours into the ground because they weren't going to have a load of tufts stuck all over them. These guys are... See that? As I say, you've got to be careful sometimes because you can leave, you can go a bit over the top, but it's nothing that you can't, you know, either dry brush a different colour over the top. You can see how far that's gone. I know I've, I've really, you know, took most of the paint off onto me a bit of uh, paper here and it still covered all that. And I did very lightly. I wasn't pushing the brush in just doing light strokes like that. Now we're going to do the the rocks. So again, we're taking it all off. So you're more or less leaving nothing behind really. But here we go. You'll see here. Uh, you'll see how much is actually still on that brush. And again, how much you put on is up to you. Yeah. So there's our dry brushing. That's all you need with dry brushing. Uh, people do dry brush figures. They dry brush models. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's what you want to do with it. Um, but uh, you can see that that is a fairly painless way. Silver grey is a fantastic dry brushing uh, paint uh, to use to bring it up. And that might look light. That's looking a lot more starker under that I can see in the viewfinder than 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 it actually is in you know when you actually put the figure down and just looking at it so your brush um i still clean the brush off so you could say well look you know gav the brush isn't actually dry uh to me that doesn't really matter well it does matter in the sense of you, you know you need to once you've washed your brush you really need to obviously get a lot of the moisture out normally i'd say to you keep obviously a fairly damp paint brush because it stops the paint going up the ferrule but you're using an old wreck brush anyway so that again is uh is ready for action again uh you could i'm not going to put any more on because i'd overdo it but uh, uh as for the side of the basin i paint mine black i just believe it's like a it's like a little picture frame uh, for the for the figure uh, so i always paint mine black but again i've seen people paint them green uh, brown uh, leave them uh, they're already where they've been burnt by the laser uh, that cuts them out type of thing. They're, they're usually that burnt colour anyway, so you don't really have to do anything. 
And then again, as I say, I put a couple of coats of, and now I spray mine through an airbrush. Uh, I use uh, the Winsor Newton Galleria um, because it's it's obviously cheap. You can get them in bigger containers than this. But the only thing I'd caution is you can still get. I've not had any silver in with it, which is why I've used it for the last few, well, good few years, probably five or six years. Uh, I, I haven't got any of the frosting that you can get from some varnishes, and that tends to be uh, moisture in the air, humidity, and it. And, but it's also can be that you're putting it on way too thick because we tend to be putting on with the brushes, which is what I've done for years uh, since I've been back into a scale modelling. I put it through an airbrush now. Uh, I will. I haven't airbrushed this figure, by the way. Uh, I might actually have done. I can't remember, to be honest with you, I think I might have actually done. Uh, I'll normally put a, a coat on him and then I'll put another coat over the, the, the base. Uh, but obviously most war gamers tend not to have uh, tend to have airbrushes, so uh, or a lot of them don't. So we're going to be sticking some tufts on him. So uh, we'll go to that one next. Right guys, uh, now we're on to sticking uh, tufts on our, our fellow here. So I will show you some bought tufts. I've had to dig these out right at the back of my jaws because to be honest with you I don't really use them. Uh, these are the type of tufts you will buy. Again this is I, I really is just for those guys that are you know, really fresh into it or just interested. Uh, sorry about the flash, it's obviously beyond the plastic. I'm not going to get these out. But uh, I can't even remember, I've long got rid of the, oh, the Mini Nature. I, I like the Mini Nature stuff, I must admit, which is probably why I bought them. Uh, these are donkey's years old, but uh, they're usually two or three folded up uh, pieces of, of plastic with, uh, with them all stuck on and you just pick them off with your tweezers. They're pre sticky so nine times out of ten they will stick straight down on your bases occasionally if the base is too rough or sometimes they don't have enough tack on them you might have to put a bit of pva uh, or even a dab of super glue depending on what you want to you want to do with them uh, just be careful super glue uh, with your figures if you're going to use super glue ca glue uh, and then put your figures straight away remember the the glue will gas off and it will more than likely the, the the fumes that are gassing off will literally put like a a frosting over your figure so or parts of his figure so be very careful if you're going to use super glue on any of your figures leave them out you know on your desk or somewhere somewhere in your room that obviously they're not getting knocked over by anybody uh, but don't just put them straight i should have said this before don't just put them straight back in say a box because i did some motor torpedo boats which i've still got actually uh uh, wargaming motor torpedo boats for I think the fighter the narrow seas and uh, not the present day uh, warlord game stuff but you know the, the, these the old metal ones and I was very chuffed at what I'd done with them I, I couldn't afford them when I was a youngster and I bought these on eBay this is going back a few years uh, didn't understand about the CA glue and I was using it to make little masts for them and stuff put them straight back in a box and of course they frosted all over so yeah just uh just be be aware if you do use super glue on anything around your figures just let it, it, it it'll be fine as long as you're not using huge gobs of it and just just let it vent off uh, in the atmosphere but rather than in a, an enclosed environment so yeah but buy these uh, you can get these from any hobby war, selling war games figures uh, or modeling or railway fi figures uh, so that's that uh, these are uh, little bushes. I don't think I've, I don't, I'll often double up on what it's just to save the the room, so don't pay no attention to that stuff. But again, that's also pre-bought uh, stuff that I've I've got in there. But these are little bushes you can buy. I wouldn't say they're terribly convincing, uh, but uh, then again, neither are my my tufts. But then again, I'm not selling them. Uh, but yeah. Um, they're bushes you can buy so if you don't want to make your own that's the route and you want obviously some some type of nature on your bases that's the the uh, uh, stuff to go for uh, you may want to just sprinkle by hand uh, your static grass over this is one millimeter uh, this is woodland scenics can we get out there Cal, so people can actually see there we go 
there's our uh, static grouse. I've hardly used any of that over the years because it's turned out to be a when it's like this fairly dense it's not too bad but when it's actually sprinkled out it's it's more of a what I call a bulking colour I tend to mix it with other stuff it's fairly faint and, and not particularly uh, seeable <laughs> for want of a better word but yeah you could just sprinkle that over PVA if you don't want to use your own static glass applicators but you can make your own I've seen people make static grass applicators out of uh, fly swats and you know electric swat, fly swats and all that but I ain't going down that road uh, right so I, I make my own tufts uh, these are they uh, different shapes sizes some are squashed up and whatever let's see if we look down again uh, what are these four mil something like that I think these ones are pre-mixed with the different colours You've got to be a bit careful with some of the eBay sellers. I don't know where they get them from in China, uh, but uh, they obviously buy the materials in and then make and, and then sell you. They break them up into packets. I've had some where they just they'll only pick on, on bushes like that with diff, about five different colours in. They'll only pick up about three colours, and the rest just won't pick up under static charge. Um, so I don't know what's going on there, but uh, be very careful. Uh, uh, again, this is just baking sheet. I'll show you what. Well, I won't show you, but I'll explain the process in a minute. Again, I use make different sizes. Uh, it's tacky glue uh, dotted onto it, um, which again I'll go into in a minute. But yeah, these are just different things I've made, different colours. Uh, I mix the colours up. I don't think I've actually got any mixed colours there actually, but uh, just different stuff. As you can see. Um, for the initial cost of a, of a static grass applicator and making your own tufts, I, I, to be honest with you, if you're into if you're into it for the long haul, I think they're well worth them. To be honest with you, whatever brand you buy, uh, these ones were made literally like little clumpy round uh, bushes, more formal almost. Uh, I've had those a fair while, those. Uh, and then I, I've I've bought some of the different colours that you can make your small flowers with, you know how convincing they are to people is up to you but I, I, I like a bit of colour and, and they're not that much different uh, from the ones that you buy uh, and they come in different colours and I've got some purple ones I think here as well along with the red but I do white ones and things as well whatever I just decide at the time uh, I, I don't use them uh, on the larger figures I tend not to use them I tend to use them more on the 18 mils and the, the 28s and things like that but um, that just shows what you can do again rather than buying them you know you can make your own uh, and all you do with those is uh, follow the process I'm about to tell you and then you just sprinkle them you dab some PVA on top of the, the, the little tufts you've made and then you just sprinkle them over um, and uh, you can always seal them with a varnish if you, these aren't sealed I didn't have the airbrush at the time, uh, but I, what I do now is obviously when I've stuck them down onto the onto the base, they get another sealing of the figure and the base get another sealing of, of varnish, and that tends to keep all the little bits from falling off. So what you, what I use to make those is this is I believe the flop box I think it's called. I've long well I've got all the material at the I always keep all the how to's and whatever, so I do believe it's called a flop box, but let's just get back. I'm no connection to these, uh, this guy selling these at all. I don't know if he still is selling them. Uh, right, there's our on off switch. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> how many years I've been using this. I think it's the green one I use for. Uh, oh, lovely, I've got static grass all over me, but I mean, painting man. Uh, uh, the, the green and the red one are used for different things. I believe the red one is uh, is used for for uh, if you're going to be putting it over terrain. Uh, so what you could do is uh, this comes with a battery operated little uh, a little charger uh, that I uh, I connect uh, and I haven't got I mean I've right now I haven't got the wires out on crocodile clips anyway that comes with it and I put them to a, an old sieve and uh, if I'm doing any terrain or larger scale. Uh, figures. Uh, I tend to find the 28 mils. Uh, if you've got a, like I'm painting one of Mez's Avon Post uh, 30 year war figures at the moment. If you were going to be 
put in static grass it straddles at this type of height uh, because normally what you do is if it was an 18 now this is only let me just I normally stick these down with PVA on these but I'll put blue tack on them for some stupid reason uh, but what, what you'd normally do is uh, put your green wire in green hole here uh, it goes onto a crocodile clip onto your base uh, and if you've got a base obviously and you uh, put a pile of static grass on the metal here uh, hold this over switch it on static static uh, will literally lift uh, the the grass particles up onto your base and they will stand up nice nice and straight uh, extremely messy do not do it on your painting desk because you will have static grass everywhere uh, I do it I literally do it on the floor of my uh, studio or a converted bedroom uh, here and then I hoover it all up after well I'd save what and I do it on top of a tea tray I then save what I can and then obviously the bits of flowing everywhere I go and hoover it all up it is extremely messy you don't wear your jumpers and anything because you get stuck all to them as well <laughs> We suffer for our uh, for our art, uh, but yeah, uh, it works well doing it like that on 18 mils and things like, and things like that, and the little the little tiny feathers. Like on these, I'm about to prime all these up tomorrow. These are Grumbler miniatures, which I'm going to be doing for a review. Uh, little six mils, as you can see, and uh, um, they're obviously going to be painted on this. But what I'm saying is they've got no problem whatsoever, like I showed with those those other six mils from back it's got no problem once they're on the base being turned over uh, but what you tend to find is if you're doing 28 mils and they're flying if you're flying colors on them if they're napoleonics or they're mounted th they struggle so it's it, it's easier for me to just make them as i'm going to do with this guy in a minute which is just plaster plaster different color tufts over them they also struggle on the larger on the larger tufts, uh, getting them to stand up is a is a bit of a bit of a nightmare. Um, on anything like the ten mils and six mils and eight mil grass, I, I find that struggles with that. Um, but yeah, so what I do is, uh, if you're going to make tufts, uh, I first of all, I've, this is actually a piece of cut up cut up road sign. Please use other footpath. Uh, no, I didn't go and nick it. I'm not a pikey. I, uh, I used to have a load of these signs for when I uh, work with the trees. Uh, anyway, get yourself a piece of cut metal. Uh, you can see these small four, mag four small magnets here. Uh, I put a piece of baking sheet on the top. I've used the magnets to hold it down in each corner. I then get this stuff. Uh, now, I do believe this Hobbycraft stuff I use. My other one was getting really old and uh, it, it was just going uh, all watery and that was really good. This stuff I have decanted into one of these, I bought a load of these for about a fiver, uh, uh, these, these like um, conjurement bottle things, oil bottle, whatever you want to call them, but they sell these for about, you get this for about 10 for a fiver. Uh, I decanted it in that and I did a whole load of tufts and I went to use them on different stuff and it never. It, it was literally not far off the uh, the gloopiness of it is now. It wasn't. I couldn't use any of them. I was most most annoyed if I'd just spent an hour and a half making a, a million load of tufts. So not impressed with that one. I believe. I know. Bought this at the same time from the same place from Hobbycraft. Uh, yeah, I know they're not cheap either. Uh, but that, I was walking past them and I, I knew I needed some. So. I will be trying this stuff because if not, I'm going to have to try and find some tacking clue from somewhere else. Because uh, the first what load I had was fine; it's just gone off over about five years. But um, that stuff, uh, it might be good for making, which is what I use it for, like on cards and you know, greetings cards and stuff. But uh, not particularly great for uh, for what we need for making tufts. But anyway, apply your. So you've got this. You've got your piece of metal, you've got your piece of uh, baking parchment. We'll just do this gap, it would have helped. Uh, you, on top, obviously your magnets are on top of that. Uh, you put your little dollops of glue on. Now sometimes I'll do straight lines so I can literally have a run of static, uh, you know, uh, that you could literally put uh, along the side of a wall in one long hit. So it could be like 
two inches long, three inches long, I don't know, or I do all roughly all the same. So you'll never get them all exactly the same and you wouldn't particularly want to anyway, but uh, I'll just do a load of dabs, you know, for literally rows and rows and rows. Uh, then you, uh, I'd wear a pair of rubber gloves for this because you can get a static charge off it. Uh, no, it doesn't kill you. Obviously, if you've got pacemakers fitted and all that, read the instructions. <laughs> Uh, you know, don't have your mobile phone on you when you're doing it, you know, anything that can be affected by static charge. Uh, but literally, turn it over like that, hold it down, and the stuff shoots up, and voila, you've got a whole, whole, uh, baking sheet full of, uh, of, of tufts, and I will make, in it. I usually do a session every couple of months, and I'll have to spend probably about two, three hours, uh, making, I don't know, probably about, it probably takes me that long with the clean up and everything, about probably two or three hours to make probably about a dozen sheets. And then I'll use them up, obviously depending what I want. So yeah, that's uh, that's what you can do uh, if you're so inclined. Uh, it's a lot of work, messy. Again, if you've got the money that you can, and you're not, you know, it, it, it all, I suppose it all comes down to what you want to do. You know, if you if you've got the money, fill your boots you know just keep buying loads and loads of tufts so I'm not knocking you for that I don't I just took it that especially because I a lot of my clients don't have me basing stuff um, uh, a lot of the time as, you, as you've seen on my videos it's literally bottle tops um, taken off the bottle tops wrapped up in bubble wrap and sent off to the client and they like to base them themselves uh, but yeah I, I uh, I think it's been a worthwhile investment. Uh, pros are you can make whatever size tufts, coloured tufts. Uh, as I say, I would I would advise you sprinkle your you know when you buy your different packs, sprinkle some 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 into a separate separate baggies with or or these you know curry type containers. Uh, sprinkle in like one mils and three mils and, and mix them up with different and they're different colors and that you know make them as as natural looking as you want to make them really uh but yeah i i i think not just commercially uh, you know some people obviously sell tufts on ebay and things like that uh, but commercially as i'm a commercial figure painter uh, it, it works but it, it works uh, uh, just as a hobbyist it would work um, you know you get a lot of flexibility uh, uh, cons are it is they are extremely messy no matter how you try and do it I don't agree with doing it outside because uh, one gust of wind and static grass is everywhere uh, <laughs> you never see it again uh, and you spend a lot of money on it uh, I can't remember how much it costs for the bags they're not particularly cheap but they're not massively expensive at the same time for when you for what you would buy you know uh, from the pre-made stuff um, but yeah mess and you know just the time if you've got the time to do them you know as I say it take me realistically it takes me about three hours to knock a, a dozen or so sheets out um, and doing all the clean up and the, the prepping to be beforehand so yeah uh, it's again it's what you want to do isn't it but uh, what it does do is when you're making your own tufts one you get the enjoyment of saying well I've done those myself uh, but also you will be able um, to uh, you know do what I'm going to do here which is uh, right, where are we Gav let's actually get something on camera you can see all the, see all the static grouse that came off that thing it, you know, it gets everywhere uh, and so you have to be a bit careful when you're painting uh, that uh, you don't. My life, what was I saying about static grass? Uh, glue being tacky. You will get the odd. You will get the odd uh, tough that has an extra long. Did all that off camera. You will get a tough that has an extra long piece, and sometimes just get a, you know little like little nail scissors or something, and just clip them off once you've finished. Uh, as I did that one completely off camera, let's do another one. Uh, I'm not, these are literally ones I picked out just to show you tough, so they're not even stuff I, I might necessarily have, have used, but uh, right, where are we? 
So that's just got tacky glue on. Sometimes you might need a little a little stick, co a cocktail stick or something, just to uh, get them in place. That one doesn't, I'm not sure if that one wants to stick down particularly, but if you can see already we're covering that base up. Now, these are ones I made the other day, I believe. So let's just see, I don't think these are gonna stick down, but we'll give it a go. No, that's what, these are all, these ones here, um, are only good now if I use a different glue. Can you see how that's uh, just gone around the outside? That was that that other glue. Um, it's just gone it, either some went it, where it didn't go off, and the others it, it it did hold them in, but that's rock hard. That's not that's not tacky. <laughs> that's totally in a way it's totally useless because the idea is you just peel them off your baking sheet and stick them straight down like they've gone. So. I am not going to faff around sticking I'm sticking extra glue on now. Uh, if I was really wanting those particular types I would do. Now these are tacky I'm hoping. And try and vary your colours as they would be. If you think of a moorland in the UK, if you're in the UK or wherever you are, you know, just just think of what uh, what you'd see on there again that one that's what you want that tacky stuff that hasn't where are we there we are yeah that's still tacky Gav says hopefully uh, look for where they would best fit you might not want to cover all the shoes over like Gav's just done there you might want to show your nice handiwork off but uh, I'm just trying to show you the what you get um, there isn't any other let's just see one of these really old little round tufts because there is so many in nature there's so many different types and variants of see he's gone straight down now that that tuft there that's easy got to be about four years old um, and the glue is still tacky on that one and it's still doing its job and they don't fall off We've got a long one there. Let's shove him in here. Now you don't have to, again, I will try and leave some some of the earth tone uh, exposed. These are, I've, I've purposely, these particular ones I did at different heights and different, so I've literally, on that one, uh, that came off as one piece, uh, but I've obviously done a done it to to do that. Uh, we'll do we'll do one more of the brown ones. We'll have him there. So another one of our little neat rounded green ones, just to get some more. But by by being you know by being able to make my own tufts, I can I can afford to go <laughs> throw caution to the wind and <laughs> and uh, and stick as many down as I like. I don't unless I want to show a massive wildflower meadow that one's not particularly sticky but I might have stuck it down on the grass uh, that was all off camera as well uh, but we put a little flower in there again I've not really been these were just I hadn't thought that far ahead really so I'm just throwing these together without uh, without being as as, uh, as thinking as I would normally do and then we'll just have maybe let's have one right in that Rock crevice there, another flower. Well, that's not gonna, that's a bit too much in it. I think that might be a bit too much. But again, it's only a demo, so. Right, there we go. So you can see, if you can make a lot of tufts, uh, that you can get more of a natural 
a natural look, you know. I mean, most most armies weren't. Yeah, I suppose if you're on a, uh, you know, a cow pasture or, or horses where they have really grazed it down to the ground, then yeah, fair enough. But again, it's it's your stuff. You decide what you want to do with it. You know. As I say, I really have just thrown these. They were just ones I pulled out to show you how to make me how I make my tufts uh, rather than stick on that particular base. But they've done the job. Um, but you know, we've still got our bit of covering uh, if, if it's a smaller base like on 18 mils uh, I try and keep them not too overhanging the base if you're going to be putting bases together obviously but uh, you yeah, know this is a I'll do it as I said I, I tend not to overdo the flowers uh, and with the flowers I'll sometimes even think of what colors I've used on the figure <laughs> to to, uh, to uh, you know sh to, to put on the ground like you know uh, that's where your colour wheel comes in handy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think that's that too bad. And, and what I do again is say is take my airbrush. Uh, I I use that, uh, that Galleria. I actually put, because I can, I put uh, a couple of drops of, or three or four drops of uh, actual lacquer thinner in. I don't know if that affects the <laughs> varnish or not, but it gives it a nice flat finish. Uh, but uh, yeah, there you go. Right, guys, um, and I, I, t I tend to use these more bent. These ones are knackered, actually. The, the tips are knackered, and I just use them for this type of work. But uh, I use these bendy type of uh, uh, tweezers, uh, and I tend to more often use them in that, that type of thing because you can dab them down at the same time. Just be careful, obviously, with tweezers. You're not taking chunks of paint off your figure. Uh, I say again, uh, use either a, you know, this is my little sacred stirring stick, as I call it, but, you know, uh, use a that's a barbecue skewer bust off but you know use something like that or a, or a cocktail stick sometimes just to put them in but again if they're not sitting down and you don't want to waste your tufts like those ones let's pick this guy up again here this little guy here i could quite easily stick him down with um some what i call raw pva you know that 10 minute stuff uh, uh you know if you if you wanted a particular style of or colour on your base um, but uh, yeah it looks like I've actually with all that I'm gonna have to make a load more tufts in the next few weeks uh, but that will be in the next couple of weeks I haven't got the uh, the willpower to do that at the moment but yeah hope that's been of, uh, of benefit to you guys as I say I apologize uh, it's taken so long to get this guy on his base and, and, and done um, it's just other things as usual with me it's it, they come into my head they go out just as quick so he's been sat there looking at me under a little cover and uh, I just thought I've got to get this one done because the next one we are doing I did show it the other day on that I think that modeling ch uh, video chat but this is the guy we're doing next this is a metal oven post uh, figure uh, although I am painting those resin 30mm war figures from Mez, who supplies these oven post figures here in the UK, or is the stockist, uh, I bought these myself uh, before I was even painting a uh, commission for, for Mez. So when you hear me shouting Mez out, it is purely uh, hoping I can help the guy out uh, with his little business. Uh, he's a nice bloke, and I, I was only saying to Lee from Battle Bunker, go and check Lee over and and men out over at Battle Bunker, nice guys uh, trying to do this bit for the hobby. Uh, I was only saying to him, he's doing lots of uh, these meetups with uh, store owners that he's met and things like that. And uh, I said, uh, I like to see those because, yes, the store owners are businesses, blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, if they weren't doing it, people wouldn't have places to game or go and buy their bits and pieces from. Uh, these are tough times. Uh, I don't agree with shouting out stuff for shouting out's sake. As I say, when I'm painting Mezzi's commissions, he never asked for any shout outs or anything. Uh, it was just purely like my work and uh, he wanted me to paint some figures for him. Uh, but um, yeah, I've got no problem shouting out people when, uh, uh, you know, providing, providing uh, the, you know, I was gonna say there's a reason for it. I don't mean because, I, what I mean is I don't go looking for or I'm not saying this to go looking for, I don't go approaching people to get discounts or, or or freebies or anything like that, you know what I mean? 
um, as I say, I've, I've, I remember when Avon Post first started seeing these on Facebook groups and Napoleon Facebook groups and uh, they were in resin and I remember saying at the time what fantastic figures but they're resin you know and uh, um, not that I would be I, I'm not a Napoleon <laughs> say I paint so many Napoleon figures I like the uniforms I like painting them without being a a, a Napoleonic buff apart from the world the war at sea I actually like obviously Sony ships and stuff but uh, um, I just enjoy painting them but uh, of course they brought the metal out I believe they've now got some uh, some uh, campaign British which I will be pitching into at some stage uh, so what I decided I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd bought just a f three or four as a test piece I believe I bought at the same time as I bought the resin 30, 30 year war figures that I originally bought off Mez uh, I just wanted to paint them as, as singles I'm going to buy some rather than put them on MDF bases I'm going to buy some of those like plastic uh, games workshoppy type bases and uh, I'll, I'll just sell them off as, as one-off um, maybe one-off collector's pieces really I did think of putting them as as, uh, as skirmish pieces to sell uh, I still might, I'm, I'm, un I'm undecided yet but uh, I won't hold on to them but uh, um, they will be a joy to paint so this is going to be our guy uh, he's metal, he's going to be primed tomorrow with a metal primer uh, or, or a primer that can be used on metal uh, you have to stick the backpack on you have to stick the uh, the sabre on sword on and the bayonet's all in one piece uh, and uh, the arms the arm holds the musket already you stick that on uh, the only trimming I had to do which I've said before you occasionally have to do with these oven posts whether they're metal or resin is it's on the arm it's where they've poured the poured them into cast I believe um, there's a there's a slight uh, lug uh, next to the to the pin that goes into the arm and you just have to gently uh, pair that away there it was again something i hope they can sort out only because it, it might put people off and people are easily put off and it would be a shame uh, people don't like work <laughs> and there's there was a big square casting or a small square casting block on the base here which i had to use a junior hacksaw uh, to to take off and as I say, you know what people are like, they they like it the easiest way possible. So maybe that would be my only say, shout out to them would be any chance you could make your casting block smaller, you'd probably sell sell even more figures. Uh, it doesn't bother me, you know, I've got all the stuff to, to do it, but uh, some people might be put off with that. Um, but lovely, I mean, he's stretching to his cartridge box there, even to the bonnet de la poli the bonnet de police, which is a soft cap they wear when not wearing the shako, and they always carry it under this cartridge box and look they've even got the little tassel there and you don't see that very often um, I'm going to paint that as a pinstripe the the, uh, the, car uh, the, the carrying uh, sack uh, that goes on the top uh, he's a voltageur I'm yet to decide him with him I, I'm not, I mean he'll be primed tomorrow and I'm probably going to start painting I don't think I'm going to paint him as a single as I said to you guys, it takes me it take me about six six hours minimum to paint this guy. Uh, if I do it in Australia, I just don't have the time, so I'm probably going to have to do it like I did with this guy and do him in bits. Um, I've got about three or four of these figures. I might just not not the same, obviously different. I just pick different ones. So uh, you know, we might have. I'll sprinkle them in other historical genres in amongst them, but uh, we might do a few of these. But yeah, I'm. I'm I thought of a cult, uh, a first, I'd remember doing um, Corsican Voltageurs when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was about 17, 18, little 15 mils they were, and I, it wasn't until I looked up online and I realised they carried the cartridge box, or they, all the ones I saw, sorry, I got a frog in my throat, had a cartridge box on the front, as some, some of them do, and this guy hadn't. The only reason I didn't want to do him as French, complete French, was I just paint so much. <laughs> it was just do do something different so I'm I'm, ver I'm 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 leaning towards doing as Swiss um, we shall see he might be Swiss then I'm just going to have a quick uh, leaf through my other stuff and just see um, I've got different I've got a lot of the Rawkins ones but not obviously French ones uh, but um, 
I might actually do a, a I, I, see I don't like do, I'm, I don't like showing books the inside of books very rarely I might show the odd page and just claim fair usage because I'm and make sure that the, the, the book you know numbers shown and everything so that, that you know people that the book company can know I'm pushing their product rather than uh, just trying to rip them off but even still uh, I don't like sitting there you know flicking through too many pages in case I get copyright Inf you know thing against me so uh but i might go through some of the books i've got bearing in mind i'm not a napoleonic buff so you know um, i make mistakes uh, you know I, I don't always get it right uh, but i do my best so yeah think of him he may be swiss <laughs> but by the time you finally we start painting him, he could have turned it into something else depending obviously his shako uh plate and stuff you know we've got to try and get it as right as we can Guys, thank you very much. Thank you for having the patience with this guy here. Um, as I say, he was a lovely figure to paint, actually. Uh, uh, as I say, a foundry figure. Um, I bought these, though, off eBay. Uh, somebody was selling a group of, obviously, a pack off. Um, and I just thought, hit the time. I've got some more some more from the same pack. They're a bit more involved with swords and pistols and, and tricorn hats and that. Uh, I just thought this would have been the simplest and a fairly bright and when I looked for a uniform that was a fairly nice colour to get attention so guys look after yourselves as I say I don't I can't keep calling these beginner series because you know I suppose they're not really this was really just to show people how the, th the thicknesses of paint and you know even down to the tufts you know or, or what to put on a base but uh, you know there's only so much you can really see that I, I just I think I'm just going to call them paint alongs now uh, where uh, you know they're just accompaniments in the background when people are working on their own stuff occasionally look up and say oh yeah that's that's nice or you know oh no I don't like that colour or don't agree with that what he's just said there whatever but you know um, they're just going to be called paint alongs I think so yeah look out for the next one hopefully Friday we'll make a start on him could be Thursday but probably Friday we'll make a start on our Voltageur uh, he's in full I actually prefer, let's get him back again for a second, I actually prefer the the campaign look, if I'm being honest. Um, I mean, Voltageur is a, well, I picked a Voltageur to paint for you guys, I don't know, because I'll have so many stones thrown at me because it'll be the wrong the wrong col collar. Uh, any of you that know French stuff, Voltageurs and that, oh, it's a nightmare trying to make sure you get the right, you know the right so uh, you look at period pe uh, paintings and then somebody says oh well no they've that that's been proved to be wrong and oh it, you know <laughs> uh yeah i should have probably just done a bog standard center company guy but uh never mind uh but yeah um i've completely lost my train of thought now there was a reason i was going to say all that but yeah yeah i was going to say yeah i do prefer the the uh, campaign look only because i can do more to them really uh, so yeah Voltageur of some description <laughs> some French French unit of some description or allied unit yeah we don't know I'm going to be looking through all my Rawkins uh, and we'll be having a look and, uh, and deciding what we're going to do with him look after yourselves thank you very very much for, for always supporting the channel uh, it's really appreciated I don't say it often enough um, you know it's uh, it, it's it's really gratifying that, that people enjoy seeing what I do uh, and whether it's you know figures or my models um, you know I, I, I'm I just struggle along and uh, I don't always get it right uh, but uh, there's always a, a, a band of brothers out there that uh, that, that stand alongside me and I, I really do appreciate it uh, you're all very, really nice kind people so look after yourselves and we will catch each other very soon on a yet another video.